Hello fellow fish reefers, the time has finally arrived to show you California's first sea cave biogenic reef. Here we are making them in Ensenada, California at our yard, placing them on the trusty flatbed and arriving in Santa Barbara three days later after a slight glitch at the border. Unloading the first sea cave, placing them in the parking lot of the boat launch ramp area, perfect staging place, loading them onto three trailers, getting ready to take them over to the Coast Guard Pier and load them onto the Danny C anchor handling tug. And here we go, loading is started. It's a beautiful afternoon in Santa Barbara, California. And here we are, dawn the next morning. We're headed out eight miles to the northwest to Goleta Bay in 40 feet of water where the Fish Reef Project has worked for 14 years to plan and build California's largest and soon to be most successful kelp restoration reef. And there's the team as we head up over a glassy ocean. We had a nice flotilla of support boats following us up to wish us well and help us with photography and diving. I'm very proud that the same group of people has been with the Fish Reef Project since its inception. Women and men that have committed themselves to helping ocean life thrive through placing sea caves over empty sea floor, creating a thriving oasis of life. The Goleta Kelp Restoration Reef. And there they go to the sea floor, where they will make life for 500 years to come. There's always planning that happens when you're at sea. Things change, marine engineering, is a difficult mistress. You always have to be willing to bend and be flexible and change and adapt to the situation as it evolves. But the crew of the Danny Sea was incredibly professional, placing the sea caves in a perfect 60 by 60 foot permitted area on the seafloor. The sea cave is designed to last for 500 years underwater and each one can sustain up to a full ton of marine life with the focus being Macrocystis pyrophora, the giant kelp, the fastest growing thing in the known universe. It grows almost 24 inches a day during the longest photo periods in June. Once the sea caves are down, the small kelp seeds float down from the natural kelp beds to the north and the south and settle down in the springtime, which is now the beginning of April, and hopefully by July we will see the sprouts of California's very next giant kelp forest. And the kelp forest is the heart of our marine ecosystem. It sequesters carbon, it creates a place for animals to feed and to breed and to hide from predation. It buffers ocean acidification. And many years ago, it was a thousand feet wide by miles long, and we're bringing it back. Here we are checking the seafloor, and the first one is on the bottom. And this is our custom Ulysses hook that just pops right off, so you don't have to have a diver unhook it when it touches the seafloor. The sea caves weigh 2,400 pounds. They're six feet by four feet by three feet and sometimes we move them with float bags into the ideal configuration. This is in Baja, Mexico. It's meant to show you what's gonna come in Goleta very soon. The kelp settles within months, and in this particular case, this is just seven months on the sea floor in central Baja, where we have full giant kelp all the way to the surface and dozens and dozens of mature plants. It's a thing of true beauty. And after a number of years, the biogenic sea caves mimic 
nature to the point to where divers swimming over them basically can't even tell that nature itself didn't put the sea cave there. And when the sea cave reefs are large enough, they can actually export marine life out of them and seed the natural reefs and help recover the natural reefs to a full state of abundance. You know you have a successful reef when the large breeding fish call it home. And in this case, a large male sheephead has found this sea cave and it certainly has called it home. You can tell the males because they have the checkered pattern of the black head and tails and the pink center. And the lobster, the spiny lobster, Panularis interruptus, have found the sea cave and they're thriving. They're using it to hide, they're using it to breed, they're using it to molt and escape predation and increase their numbers. And this is calico bass in great numbers in Mexico. A very nice spider crab calls the sea cave home. And you can see the kelp starting off in the distance. And there's calico bass, there's juvenile female sheephead, there's sand bass, there's white fish. A very nice mix of mature fish call the sea cave home after a very short period of time. And you can see even the small algae forming. And this is a giant black sea bass, somewhere between 75 and 100 pounds, 50 kilos, calling the sea cave reef home. And even abalone like to grow on the sea cave. In this case, those are pink abalone. And this is the team of ocean warriors that made it all happen. And I would like to thank you for helping ocean life thrive.